you have done any programming previously, these topics might seem familiar to you. With propositional logic, we are making a statement that is either true or false, and we can modify and expand these statements with AND, OR, and NOT. We will also be working with truth tables to figure out the result of a compound statement made up of two or more propositional variables. We'll start off by looking at propositions, and then at logic notation so that we can write our propositions symbolically. Then we'll use truth tables to figure out the result of a formal proposition, and even to see if two formal propositions are equivalent, and we'll look at tautologies and contradictions. First, we're working with propositions. Propositions are statements that are either true or false. You can also think of them as yes-no questions if you phrase it in a question form. A formal proposition is also a statement that will be true or false, but may contain AND, OR, and NOT statements combining multiple individual propositions into a single formal proposition. So in English, this would be like if we said, Fran has a cat and the cat is black. Or again, in more math terms, x is greater than 10 and x is also less than 20. So we can build a formal proposition with two separate propositions like, the printer is offline and the printer is out of paper. The entire statement will be true if each proposition it is built from is also true, since we're using the AND to link them. If one part happens to be false, like the printer is online, then the entire formal proposition will also be false, because we can't say that both are true at once. If we change the AND to an OR and say, the printer is offline OR the printer is out of paper, then it is okay for one of the parts to be false, as long as at least one of the propositions is true. With the formal proposition, the printer is offline and the printer is out of paper, we have two propositions. The printer is offline is the first proposition, and the printer is out of paper is the second proposition. Because we're using two propositions, there are four possible states, just like with our coin flips from earlier. So we can say the printer is offline and the printer is out of paper as one state, the printer is online and the printer has paper as another state, or you could say the printer is offline but the printer has paper as another state, and the printer is online but the printer is out of paper as the fourth state. So let's look at this illustrated in an example. Let's say a coworker comes up to us and tells us that the printer is offline and the printer is out of paper. Sure, okay, good to know. If somebody else later tells us that the printer is offline, but it has paper, then the original statement is false. We're expecting the printer to be both offline and be out of paper. We encounter the same problem if someone else tells us that the printer is online, but the printer is out of paper, because we've been told that the printer is offline and it is out of paper. And finally, if someone comes up to us and says that the printer is online and it has paper, this, again, should be false based on the printer is offline and the printer is out of paper. When an AND combines two propositions, the formal proposition is only true if both propositions are true. If either of them are false, then the entire formal proposition will be false. Now let's look at this with an OR statement. If the first person tells us that the printer is offline or the printer is out of paper, we can assume that one or the other is true, or maybe both, but it's okay if one of them is false. If someone else later comes up and tells us that the printer is offline and the printer has paper, that's still valid because we've been told that it's either offline or it's out of paper, so they have confirmed that it is offline, but it does have paper. And the opposite is also okay. If somebody tells us that the printer is online, but the printer is out of paper, that also works with the original proposition that the printer is offline, or it is out of paper. The only time this doesn't work out is if someone comes up to us and tells us the complete opposite. They say that the printer is online, and that the printer has paper. So both of the original statements are false. When an OR combines two propositions, the formal proposition is true if one or both of the propositions are true. It will only be false if all propositions are false. 
So now that we've talked a bit about propositions, we should learn about how to write it symbolically. When working with propositions, we will use propositional logic notation to represent AND, OR, and NOT. We will also shorten our propositional statements into propositional variables. So for AND, we have a symbol that looks kind of like an A, but without the middle line. For OR, it looks like a V. And for NOT, we use that sign. I'm not sure what its name is, but we call it the negation symbol. It looks like a sideways backwards L. So when we are creating a formal proposition from several other propositions, we'll need to specify our propositional variables, what they represent, and write our formal proposition with the symbols. So for example, if we say that P represents the printer is out of paper, and O represents the printer is offline, then we can write P in the AND symbol, and O to say that the printer is out of paper and the printer is offline. So let's practice. Given the following propositions, P means I am a pirate, G means I drink grog, write the following symbolically. 1. I am a pirate and I drink grog. 2. I am a pirate and I don't drink grog. 3. Either I am a pirate or I don't drink grog. So symbolically, you should have gotten these results. For number one, we have P and G. For number two, we have P and not G. And for number three, we have P or not G. If we prepend a negation symbol to a propositional variable, the result of this formal proposition is the opposite of the proposition on its own. So P on its own is the printer is out of paper, and not P, or the negation of P, is the printer is not out of paper. If we have a formal proposition using AND, such as P and Q, and we negate it, so we have the negation of P and Q within parentheses, then the result is not P or not Q. And likewise, if we're using OR to say P or Q, and we negate it, so we have the negation of P or Q inside of parentheses, then the result is not P and not Q. So here's another practice problem. Using the same propositional variables as before, where P is I am a pirate, and G is I drink grog, write the following in English. Number one, not, then parentheses, P and G. Number two, not, and then parentheses, P or G. For number one, you should have, it is not true that I am a pirate and I drink grog, which you can further simplify to I am not a pirate or I don't drink grog. And for number two, the negation is, it is not true that I am a pirate or I drink grog, which can be simplified to I am not a pirate and I don't drink grog. But wait, how do we know that these negation rules are actually logically equivalent? We know because we can diagram all possible states using a truth table. Two different formal propositions are said to be logically equivalent if their outcomes are the same for all possible states of P and Q, or however many propositional variables there are. So now let's look at truth tables. The truth table of a single propositional variable is very simple. It can only be true or false. For a formal proposition, we start by writing out all possible combinations of values for each propositional variable. Remember the coin flips? Here we're using true and false instead of heads and tails, but it's along the same lines. If we are going to be working with a formal proposition like P and Q, then first we need to write out all combinations of P and Q together. Each variable can be true or false, but we'll have four outcomes. We could have P is true and Q is true. We could have P is true and Q is false. We could have P is false and Q is true. And we could have P is false and Q is false. 
After we've written out all of the combinations of propositional variables, then we can write out the formal proposition result itself. Remember that for a statement with AND, the entire formal proposition can only be true if all propositions are true. Otherwise, the entire formal proposition will be false. So, for the row where P is true and Q is true, the result for P and Q will be true. For the other rows where one or both are false, then the result of P and Q will be written as false. With a statement that uses OR, the entire formal proposition will be true if at least one proposition is true. It will only be false if all propositions are false. So again, we start out by writing out all possible combinations of P and Q in our truth table, and in any of the rows where we have at least one true, then the result of the formal proposition P or Q will also be true. It will only be false on the row where both P and Q are false. Let's also look at the negation really quick. A negation can work on a single propositional variable, and the result is the opposite of whatever that variable's value is. So if we're looking at just the propositional variable P, we only have two options, true and false, for states of P, and then the negation of P will be the opposite of that in each row. Using these truth tables, we can build out truth tables for more complex formal propositions, including proving that two formal propositions are logically equivalent. So let's show that the negation of P and Q inside of parentheses is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. We will start with a table for P and Q. Then, knowing that the negation of a proposition will give us the opposite, we can write out the column for not parentheses P and Q. Now maybe not P or not Q is hard to do in our heads, so let's just break it down first and do not P and not Q as their own columns. Then, using the column for not P and the column for not Q, we can solve for the column not P or not Q. And from building out this truth table, we can show that the results of negation of P and Q and not P or not Q are logically equivalent. When we look at the truth table, every row has the same value for these two columns. Now it's your turn. Build out the truth table for P or not Q. Your result should be that the formal proposition is true if both P and Q are true, or P is true and Q is false, or if P is false and Q is false. But the formal proposition will be false if P is false and Q is true. Okay, now practice with this one. Build out the truth table for P and not Q. The result for the formal proposition should be false if both P and Q are true, and it's false for if both P and Q are false, and it's false for if P is false and Q is true, but it will be true if P is true and Q is false. Finally, you will prove the other negation rule. Build out a truth table in order to prove that the negation of P or Q is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. Your truth table should end up looking like this. The result for both of these formal propositions is only true if both P and Q are false. Sometimes we may get a formal proposition where, no matter what the states of the propositions it is made up of are, all outcomes turn out true or all outcomes turn out false. When all outcomes are true, the formal proposition is a tautology. When all outcomes are false, the formal proposition is a contradiction. So as a simple example, let's say we have a formal proposition P or not P. When we draw out the truth table for this, we can see that all results are true, so this is a tautology. How about P and not P? 
Here, all the outcomes are false, so this is a contradiction. Sometimes a formal proposition may end up being a tautology or a contradiction. Later on, we will do some proofs by contradiction to prove that a statement is true because the opposite would be a contradiction. Finally, we can build out truth tables that have even more propositional variables, and the table may get confusing to keep track of. The rule of thumb is to start at all true, and then change the rightmost variable. Then, go to the next column, change it, and repeat the column to the right and continue moving from right to left. You should notice a pattern. The rightmost column changes value at every other row. The second column goes by twos. And the third column goes by fours. So keep to this pattern. It makes it really hard to grade things if they're not in order. Next time we'll be working with propositional logic more, but using predicates. It is similar to what we did this time, but instead of just p and q, we'll have p of x and q of x, where x is an input variable, and whether p of x evaluates to true or false depends on what the input value x is. We will also explore the usage of for all and there exists when we are building quantified statements.